It's Madden NFL 24, and we've got a couple teams searching for their first Super Bowl. It's the Cincinnati Bengals and the Jacksonville Jaguars on Monday Night Primetime. We are 15 miles due west of the Atlantic, nestled in downtown Jacksonville at TIAA Bank Field. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup, as it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. And leading them out, their signal caller. Now it is fourth season in the NFL. You almost feel privileged, partner, every time you get to see him run out in the field to start a game because every game, every snap, you and I both know he has the potential to do something special. And that inspires his teammates as well. They know how incredible he is. They want to give max effort as well. They'll throw this out wide and complete it to Ridley. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. And let's face it, that what we just saw there, not a surprise, is it? I mean, this is what he does well. And if you don't tackle him as soon as he catches the ball, <laughs> this is the end result. Big yardage after it. Got the speed, the agility, so good with run after catch. And we're only in the first quarter, so they better get a wrangle and a hold on that quickly. Yeah, you're exactly right. And what's really difficult to try and defend him is if you want to press him so that you get him on the ground quickly after the catch, a lot of times he'll just run past you at the initial point of contact and he'll go deep. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. But hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Second and a couple. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. That was a lightning fast decision that time. He just caught it and got rid of it. Because he saw his guy was going to be open immediately. So he took the R, the run, out of the play. He took the O, the option, out of the play, and immediately got to the pass. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Inside handoff down to Fournette. And he'll get this down to about the 30, 31 yard line. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. 
On third down, he'll drop to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Uh, that's a big conversion there on third down, and this has been a great opening drive. You know, at this point, they'd hate to settle for three, but they've created a fresh set of downs and a first and goal. First and goal from the three. They'll drop to throw. Touchdown, Jaguars! Mercedes Lewis from three yards out. And the Jaguars put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Point after, right down the middle. And it's now a 7 nothing game. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And it culminates in a Jags touchdown. Here's the Jaguar kick team now as they run up and send this one away. The Bengals offense here ready to rock and roll. Joe Burrow is the man at quarterback. Hey, we all love a good story. And what we like even more, guys who can fight through adversity. Joe Burrow coming out of high school, goes to Ohio State, doesn't get a chance to start, transfers to LSU, not thought to be a top prospect, ends up the number one pick in the draft and justifies it. Tremendous play, excellent mobility, and leadership off the charts. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He gets it left side to Johnson. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. 27 yards there, a first down. A great job pulling that one in from a guy, as we know, who can really blaze. He's got a lot of speed. And that speed can work for him so many different ways. Sometimes he just takes off and goes and just runs past people. Sometimes you get people to back off so far that you can catch everything underneath. But still, at some point in the game, you probably have to make some contested catches, right? Sometimes you have to go up and beat a defender for the football. He has that in his arsenal as well. Showed it right there. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. They are such a talented team at defending the perimeter and taking away throws to the outside. Great confidence, great skill. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Off the play fake. Here's Burrow. Quick hitter here. It's complete. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. What do they have for this? Third and 11. Burrow looking to pass. Taken in by his big tight end. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, 
On offense, I want their body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping in one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And now one yard to go on third down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. They go play action with Burrow. And this one dropped in the end zone. Oh, looked like a touchdown, but not to be. And now it's fourth down. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. And especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. And his kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So both teams come away with points on their opening drives. Now they still trail. They answered the touchdown with a field goal, but at least able to break that goose egg here early. And that is what's important, right? Because they didn't let that initial touchdown go unanswered. Took the ball themselves, moved it downfield, and put it through the post for three points. Game on. Graham now to boot it away after the made field goal. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, you've almost got to get down to those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier <laughs> said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Well, that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. They're going to look to throw. And Lewis has it, the tight end. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. A gain of four that time as the drive will continue. I like the call on third and two. They were geared up to stop the run. I like the fact they just hit them quick. A little slant route. All about timing there, partner. Yeah, the timing, everything well executed. Back to throw again. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. But they certainly came out firing in this one, and while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that'll be the last shot that they take in this game. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Again, he'll drop to throw. Complete. This is Lewis. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies 
which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. They keep it with Fournette on first down. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Ball on the 36 now. Here's second down and seven. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. This one caught by Ridley. And he's got another first down as the tackle is going to be made at the Bengals' 25-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. Really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. That hardly hit the ground, and I thought, yeah, he might be locked in for this one. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Fournette, a first down carry. And yeah, he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. But they get back in the huddle. He's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. On second down, here's Fournette. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. A gain of two there on the heels of a one-yard pickup on first. And a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. He'll drop to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Mercedes Lewis with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Jags are able to stretch out their lead. Still first quarter, two receiving touchdowns for him. How are they going to slow him down? I think they're thinking about altering their game plan. Whatever they came in with, now maybe you switch a better cover guy to him. Or you make sure you have more people in his general area, wherever he lines up, to at least try and discourage them from throwing the ball to him. The extra point splits the uprights, and that pushes the lead up to 11. Here's the Jaguar kick team now as they run up and send this one away. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. They'll begin the drive with a run by Dillon. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Not a huge play, but I think they're more than happy with how it turned out. Don't be surprised to see them revisit that call because there was a lane there for more than just five yards. Put it in your back pocket and break it out when you need it later. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. They're passing here. Joe Burrow. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The goal of anyone running a curl route 
is to make sure you try and get defenders on your back and shield them away from the football. But sometimes even when you run a good route, the defense finds a way to knock it away. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. This ball taken in here by Brooks. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him six yards, and they do can third. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. Play action. It's Burrow. Johnson's got it complete. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. We've got a pause following the play because it appears a member of the Bengals in some discomfort. Now the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Just need a yard here, second and one. Burrow throw. Open that is Chase complete. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as he'll get this down to the 47-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 47. To the air again, Burrow. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Johnson. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. From the 38 now, here's second down and one. Burrow on play action. He gets this one to Johnson. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Second and short, that's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. After one, a 14-3 ball game. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Bengals in control of the football. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go-around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. They'll fake the jet sweep and go play action with Burrow. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Credit that sack to Dante Fowler, Jr., well, on that one, they, they go with a play fake CD, but I don't think anybody really was fooled. All eyes were fixated on the quarterback, and they got him to the ground. And to run this play successfully, you've got to make sure that everyone is doing their part. You actually have to sell this play. You've got to sell the run action. Touchdown, Bengals! A great effort there. 28 yards. And the Bengals have got it back to within a score. For good reason, quarterbacks want to get the ball to the perimeter to their wide receivers for big plays. But in this situation, it felt like, based on coverage, he knew that he wanted his tight end to have the football, and for good reason. Now the extra point. And he's got it. That cuts the lead. It's now 14-10. to 10. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it ends with a Bengals score. Out 
Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. And now out come the Jags. Well, this offense looks like they have a little extra pep in their step as they take the field here for drive number three because remember, Charles, drives one and two both ended in the end zone. Yeah, and right now they've just got to be careful not to lean into overconfidence because every drive has a life of its own. But I like the way that they've started, the way that they're going about doing things right now. They've got a chance for that third consecutive touchdown, and that would be a crushing blow to the defense. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Smith catches left side. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Perfect. Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. Looking here for Smith downfield. And that's caught at the 25. And he's brought down after a very nice game. A big pickup of 38. Pretty good timing. He waited just enough for that post play to develop and laid it right in there. And you know what a lot of teams do when they decide to throw a post route? Because it's a little bit longer developing play. They max protect. Bring everyone in, keep the tight end in, an extra back to make sure the quarterback has time to deliver the football. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Over the middle to Smith. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. And between the last two plays, they've moved it over half the length of the football field. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago. Followed it up with another nice one here. And before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, your front five, whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit, and that's what he did on that play. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. <laughs> I have to laugh a little bit because he actually handed it off. I thought with the two touchdown passes he's thrown in this one already, he'd go ahead and fling and try and get a third one. Yeah, now from this spot on third down, I think he'd probably throw it here. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about it. Did he get the feed down? Yes! Touchdown! Travis Etienne from eight yards out. And they're able to add on to their advantage. Well, just a sensational start for this offense, Charles. Three drives, three passing touchdowns. Is that like mentioning a perfect game in baseball? Are we cool to do it here in football, partner? No, I think you can do it here in football. I think perfect game in baseball, that, that's its own category. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Could not imagine a worse start for that secondary, or let's face it, a better one for this offense. No chance they stop passing now the way that it's going. I think we'll continue to press the ball downfield and hopefully reap the same results. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. A strong showing their last time out. They scored the touchdown, but Charles, they look up, and they're still down double digits, so you feel like just to keep pace, this drive probably needs to end in the end zone as well. Yeah, and I think the best move for this to not worry about how far they are down on the scoreboard, but to just remember the last drive and how it ended, go ahead and try and repeat that. Then you can look at the scoreboard and see where this game is. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. And his throw is incomplete. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it. Trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. 
So following the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 25. Now it's Burrow. The throw out to Ross, he's got it. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. That one good for 15, and the Bengals get a first down. Well, this hasn't really been a first half to remember on either side of the ball, but I think this kind of makes this an important drive. You'd love to get this back to a one-score game if you can, and that's good work there to get some yardage here and pick up the first down. In motion right comes Green. Now they show Jet sweep it instead or run up the middle here. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Now second and nine. Here's Burrow. And a fine chase on the right side complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The LSU connection, Burrow to Chase for the Cincinnati first. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Running up the middle, here's Dillon. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. The passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle, and that's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. This is second and eight. Again, it's Dillon. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them in the game. Taking it right down Broadway. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. A big play there, 46 yards, and the Bengals are back within a score. But not only, Charles, did he beat double coverage to make the catch, and then as soon as he did, locked his gaze upfield and made sure to reach the end zone. Go grab your dictionary, partner. Look up determination, and his picture is going to pop right up. How about him getting through multiple defenders, finding his way through coverage, and making sure he got to the end zone. That's a big time play right there. Extra point right down the middle. And it's now Lead cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Out is their quarterback with his offense to take over once more. He had the touchdown pass on the last drive, his third already in this first half, as he'll try again with a first down. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He's got Lewis. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Now a 
first carry for their fullback. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Trey Hendrickson, the one who gets him on the ground. Here's second and ten. Back to throw. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. They're going for a receiver there. Already has one touchdown to this first half. A second one not to be. I like where their headspace is, though. I mean, I really like the thought process, right? You got a guy who's already scored one, right? You want to go back to him, continue the hot hand, and make them adjust to you defensively. I like what they were trying to get done, even though they weren't successful. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. And I feel like my man, Old Mo, momentum might be changing jerseys right now. How about what they just got done? They scored a touchdown their last drive. Now here's a three and out. Maybe momentum's getting ready to creep to the other sideline. And the Jaguars send out their punter, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. And I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. Do they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at their own 15. He'll set up the throw from the gun. Quick completion here to Johnson. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. They will throw on first down with Burrow. He finds Ross, right side, it's complete. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that will bring up second down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. There are not many times where you might say it's a detriment to have a quarterback with a cannon for an arm, but this might be one of those few times. He just laid that one out there a bit too far, and his receiver couldn't run under it. Throwing again, it's Burrow. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, they've certainly gotten him involved in this first half, and on third down, they looked his way again. And what a delight for his quarterback to find him and keep the drive moving. So two first downs, and that moves the ball to the 42 now, first and 10. Now it's Burrow. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Right up to that point, I was about to say, he's had a pretty good half catching the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. Second and 10. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. What a luxury to have a guy like this who can not only spell your starter, but can come in and keep drives going. Now the Bengals on third down. They've been near perfect, four for five to this point. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 32-yard line. The Bengals' passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. 
his position and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one. And that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. They snapped that at one. Now it's Burrow. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. Part of what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front. The front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks. And they go play action now. Burrow rolling to his right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent gain. This offense has converted two third downs on this drive already. This is third and four. Now Burrow. That's pulled in by Brooks. Shifts by him. And they'll get this down to the 10. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Burrow looking to pass. This ball taken in here by Brooks. Touchdown! From 10 yards out, and the Bengals have taken the lead. These two teams in this first half, it's been fun. Back and forth, back and forth. Well, it's not fun for the defensive coordinators, <laughs> but offensive coordinators are enjoying it. Yeah, they're having streaks here, aren't they? Being able to put scores together and, and really bunch them up, and we have a tight game here. You know, we often talk about having the right shoes for the right turf. Today is track shoes, because that's what we've seen with these offenses. <laughs> yeah, it's been an absolute track meet so far, and fun to watch. Point after, right down the middle, and that gives him a three-point lead. So that one a long 11-play drive, and it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. The kicking team out now for the Bengals as they'll send this one away. And he'll just take a seat and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. We have been treated to great offense on both sides. The defense is on the other end of the spectrum. They're just searching for answers right now, aren't they? And for most defenses, it's a very uncomfortable and in a lot of ways unfamiliar spot because points are going to be scored but the way we're seeing them today it's almost like there's no resistance they've got to figure out how to slow these offenses down maybe someone on either side can make a big play and start to wreck and disrupt the timing that we're seeing as we get closer to halftime here and they're able to get this one across the 35 a gain of 11 to kick off the drive and it's a quick first down any questions of how they'd approach this drive were answered right there. They come out throwing, and they get a nice pick up here toward the end of the first half. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now back to throw. And his throw here's incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Back to throw here. Caught right side, it's Lewis. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. And they call his number again, it's his sixth catch and a first down. The coach is always hard on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? They'll get this one into the hands of Lewis. 
The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Now second and five. On the draw, this is Fournette. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Delayed give there out of the gun. Defense was ready. And I'm not a big fan of a draw play out of the shotgun formation because the quarterback's not having much action where he's getting away from the line of scrimmage. He's catching the football, making a little head fake, and then handing it off. You should be able to read it. Is that the Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Bengal offense going to see the ball one more time in this first half. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. Clock at 20 seconds to go in the half as they come up first and 10. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams. This is a very level first half, and I'd expect to see more of the same after the break. All right, coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. And no run back here as the third quarter will commence with a touchback. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember that first half good through the air and really all around an outstanding offensive performance. Absolutely. They reached the end zone several times. The passing game working awfully well and most importantly, partner. And they went to the tunnel with a lead. They come back out with that lead. Absolutely. NFL coaches, we know they're perfectionists in a lot of ways, but they had to like what they saw in that first half. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. On any passes in the middle of the field, anyone who's going after the football is going to be conscious that it's probably going to be contested, and often physically. Sometimes that leads to drops. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Burrow will throw. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Everything looked right on that play except the conclusion. He dropped it. An in route going into a little bit of traffic. Maybe in the back of his mind he was wondering where the hit was going to come from. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. 
Burrow on play action. And that nearly the pick that they needed. He couldn't pull it in there, and it's fourth down. Give him credit for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Six-yard return after a punt of 48. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 43. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Fournette. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down at six. They'll look to throw here. They'll get this off to Taylor. No gain on the play. And now third down and six to go. They tried to swing it out left into the flat, but the defense, they were very principled there. It felt very West Coast offense, didn't it? You know, you know their expression, right? On a West Coast offense, when they throw the ball, it's either going to be a touchdown or a check down, meaning they like to press it downfield. If they don't have it, swing it out, which is exactly what we saw there. But how about the great pursuit and tackle to make a nice play? And he's got another first down as the tackle is going to be made at the Bengals' 25-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The veteran tight end, Mercedes Lewis, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. He rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And the Bengals are going to take over once again with a football at their own 20-yard line. And that could turn out to be a giant play, Charles. You've got an offense driving to take the lead, but they're turned away on the INT. And I think that we might look back on this in the fourth quarter and say, that was the play of the game. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. Now, both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively, just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. Meanwhile, Burrow's throw taken in by Green here. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones at a first down. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. First down. Here's Burrow. 
Now a swing pass for Dillon. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. And the reception made by Green. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. 23 yards on the play. Well, so far, little to no resistance by the defense on this drive alone. Three passes, three completions, three first downs. They're taking it to him, and it's paying off. Green will come in motion right. And he'll get it here on the jet sweep. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. On second down. It's Brooks, and he is close to a first down as he's tackled at the Jaguars' 15-yard line. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. They'll try and run for the first with Dillon. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. A three-yard loss. Fourth down now. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. Fourth down, so Zach Taylor sends out the field goal unit. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. And this one is right through. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. Graham now to boot it away after the made field goal. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. But not an ideal way to end their previous drive. They threw the interception, Charles, after they had built up some momentum. They were moving the football, but something to at least build on for this offense as they run back out here. Yeah, you're right about that. Up until that last play, everything was working pretty well for this offense, gaining chunks of yardage, getting first downs, really making a push for the end zone, and looked like they had a nice rhythm going. Now you got to have a short memory here. Don't focus on the interception. Focus on what came before it and get back to it. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. Now he's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. 
a loss resulted. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. The Bengals offense now, they head back onto the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. On second down, Dillon. They'll get him to the ground at the 20, following a pickup of four. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Now a third and six. They're passing here. Joe Burrow working the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Nothing flashy there. The slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys because it's a quick play, and you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch, and then he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the gun, it's Dillon. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. Back-to-back -back nice gains, that one for 14 yards and another first. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. From midfield now, Burrow. And he'll find Chase on the right side complete. So the completion good for six yards. And it's second down. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. On second down, here's Burrow. A quick throw there is incomplete. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 29-yard line. The Bengals' passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. And when you're in a one-score game in the second half, now's not the time to force the football into places where you shouldn't. And that's a smart decision to just get that one out of there. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Running right, here's Dillon. Gets past one man. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the ten. 45 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. On first down. 
It's Brooks. And he'll take this one inside the 10 down to the 8. A gain of three, second down. Here's Burrow. And it's caught. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Heavy set out there on third and one. They go play action with Burrow. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield, but when push came to shove, they stood their ground, and now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. They'll run for it with Dillon. And not only did he not get in the end zone, he didn't get the first down either. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. So he needed the short yard as Charles he elected to try to bounce it outside of the outer third unsuccessful. Sometimes those plays are stacked up by the defense and there's nowhere to go, so you have to bounce it outside. And some backs just get impatient. They want to go to where they think there's more open territory instead of going where the play was actually blocked. In any case, it didn't work here. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, not a gain that you're going to go crazy about, but when you start at your own two-yard line, any type of space is good for the offensive guys. Yeah, you just can't go backwards from here. They did it. Now we'll see if they can keep it on schedule here on second down. On second down, it's Taylor. And he's upended at the six as they double their room to maneuver on a pickup of three. Here's third and six. He'll look to throw. And this is going to be intercepted. And the Bengals are going to get the football back as time will run out in this third quarter of play. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. It's the Bengals in possession of the football and in possession of the lead as well as we start the fourth. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. Green's got it over the middle. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15, a gain of three. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. And they'll come up second and seven. Now it's Burrow. Over the middle complete. That's Brooks. And the Bengals are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover. And they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there. And now they're looking at a first and goal. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Now it's Burrow. He's got it for a Bengal touchdown. A great play there. His second touchdown of the night. And the Bengals will add to their fourth quarter lead. We talk so often about how hard it is to win in the NFL when you turn the ball over. And here a late turnover leads to a fourth quarter touchdown and a two-score lead. 
And what's more important is being able to take advantage when a turnover presents itself. You've got to come up with points to make the other guy pay. They're able to do so here, and they've got a pretty good chance now of winning this football game. And he's got it. So the two-point conversion is good, and they add on to their fourth quarter lead. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. So now, Charles, this drive maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. They'll drop to throw. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. There for the sack, B.J. Hill. Well, there was second long. Now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving them exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. The Jaguars on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This is third and 10. That's to the sideline and incomplete. And a smart play there. He's probably saying, I wish I would have done that on the last drive instead of throwing the interception. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. That's a tough spot for a running back coming out of the backfield because you know he's got to look for the football. Knowing full well, he's got a man coming his way full steam, and he broke that one up. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Burrow looking to pass. He will find his man Chase complete. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. A gain there of 21 yards. Well, normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter, but the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game, and trusting this quarterback... I think he continued to do so. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. Call it a gain of three on the play. And that gets second down. Okay. 
Now Burrow. It's Dillon again. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? They will throw on first down with Burrow. Got his man complete over the middle. That's green. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Second down and a yard. Burrow on play action. Throw left side complete to Chase. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. <laughs> That's all they care about right now. Dylan now on first and ten. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? On right, second down, another run for Dillon. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. It's a 3-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. Starting to feel a little to me like the air is coming out of the balloon, so to speak, defensively. They're taking their will from them right now. That's what they're doing. Whatever they want to call, it's working. They're handling things up front. And it's not just the offensive line. It's everyone. You're seeing the guys on the perimeter blocking downfield and making sure that they're secure. So, yeah, you're exactly right. The air is out of the balloon. And right now, they're almost lifeless. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. Not a whole lot there on first and goal, and that's what you're looking for defensively. You'll certainly live with giving up just a yard or two in this situation. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. They run once more with Dillon. And the ball is knocked out. Could have been a costly mistake, but as it turns out, they keep possession. You can't give away these types of opportunities in the red zone. And I'm sure that was flashing through his brain as the ball escaped his hands. Fortunately for him, able to get picked up by his team, fumble recovered, they still have an opportunity deep in the red zone. Third and goal, Burrow. Touchdown, Bengals! From four yards out. And the Bengals have put this one to bed here in the fourth quarter. So an important touchdown right there is now they're really beginning to pull away. Yeah, and this was a tight game until not too long ago. But since then, they've hit the accelerator. And they pushed the lead up to three scores here in the fourth quarter. And I don't see them looking back. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it ends with a Bengals score. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. The Jaguars back with it on offense. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, They've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. 
But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Wide open receiver complete. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. 36 yards on the play. Uh, defensively, I know they have the comfortable lead here in the fourth, but they do not want to give up big plays like that. They want to finish strong. So oftentimes in this situation, you tighten up underneath in your coverage and you bring your safeties back. They can pick up anything that leaks through. But in the meantime, upfield, you're making plays on the football. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Back to throw here. He'll get this out to the flat for ETN. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And that'll bring up second down. Now back to throw. His throw incomplete. That incompletion brings us one step closer to the end of this one. Maybe mercifully, partner. And let's face it, though. No surprise, they're still flinging it around. They have pride, too. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Again, he'll drop to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 16. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. That's a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? It should be aware, but it was so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not cause, easy. Because <laughs> when, they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Jaguars have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. All right, so this one not quite over yet. Back to a two-score game, CD. Yeah, and you've still got four-plus minutes to go. So when you think about comebacks, it's happened before. Now, it hasn't happened often, but you've got to think to yourself, Let's be the next great comeback story and play this one out. The extra point splits the uprights, and the lead will be cut down to 14. Here's the Jaguar kick team now as they run up and send this one away. Well, now how about this return? And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. And the Bengals offense getting set and ready to go again here. This game was really a tussle, seemed like just a moment ago, and now they've got the momentum. A couple of scores on their last pair of drives and a two-score lead. I think here now you just you go conservative, right? Run the football, work the clock. You know, I usually agree with you, but I'm going after them right here. I really? want to put this bad boy away. I wouldn't be afraid to throw it. They've got all the confidence, all the momentum on their side. Go ahead and take your dagger shots and try and finish this one off. I disagree vehemently. <laughs> I say, run the football, you've got the lead. Well, let's watch it and find out who's right. 
66 yards rushing for him now to this point. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Burrow will throw. And he is caught. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard gain there on third and two. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Foye Aluakon finding his way to the ball for a stop, a tackle for loss. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. The recipe is pretty simple, I think, right? Just give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. Now, this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll run it. Here's Dillon. And that one opened up for him well as he'll take this down to the 26-yard line. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Again, it's Dillon, and he will have a Bengals first down, and it's celebration time on that sideline, and they've earned it. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Starting to look like this drive, it may be the final nail in the coffin. Well, this is why you work out so hard, right? This is why you spend all that time in the offseason. This is why you have those OTAs and mini camps for these situations, these scenarios, to run someone into the ground and secure a victory. down to a knee and that should be the final act of this one yeah it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd but when you go on the road that band of brothers attitude right just us against the world and get it done 
<laughs> How happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. Well, partner, under the lights in primetime, this offense, they gave the nation quite a show, putting up that many points to come away with what will certainly be a memorable win for them. And Brandon, I think it's as simple as this. Some players, some teams, they're just meant for the big stage. And when they get a chance to play in this type of atmosphere where all eyes are on them and all the lights are shining brightly, they show up and they show out. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From Jacksonville, good night, everybody.